as you move around all of the tremendous fisheries that we have around the southeast and southwest regions of our country, you learn that each place has its own peculiarities, its own character, and its own stories. We're going to tell you a really cool story today about an interesting place in far south Texas. I'm glad you're along with us for the next half hour because Let's Fish TV is on the air right now. That is a fish. Oh man, look at this. <laughs> it's time for the only program that brings you real time fishing reports from the Southeast region every week. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at that. Woo. This is Let's Fish. Hi everybody, this is Let's Fish TV, because that's what we do. We're going bass fishing on this week's show. In the next half hour, we're gonna take you out on a lake that I haven't seen in more than 20 years, tell you a really cool bass fishing story. Now in order to do that, we've got the Low Stinger 198 fully rigged and ready to go. It's got the Mercury Pro XS 115 hanging on the back of it, the power poles all loaded up. And in order to demonstrate this story and what's happening, I'd like to bring you to beautiful Choke Canyon Reservoir. It's a big old lake located kind of out in the middle of nowhere in South Texas. It's about halfway between San Antonio and Corpus Christi. It's got several species of fish in it, but we're going bass fishing this week. The lake has experienced something truly unique over the last couple of years. And to help us tell that story, my friend Mike Bates, who fishes tournaments professionally and also guides here on Choke Canyon, is going to jump in the boat with us and help us understand what's happened to this lake and the bass fishing recently. And I'll give you a clue, it's a good story that you're going to like. While we're doing that, we're taking you around your local region for this week's fishing reports. From our expert team of Let's Fish Insider reporters from lakes, rivers, and bays where you live, they'll bring you up to date on both the saltwater and the freshwater fishing. So right now, the low boat goes down that boat ramp into Choke Canyon Reservoir. The next time you see me, I'll be out there with Mike Bates catching some bass. Right now, let's get things started back at the studio and your weekend planner. Hello everyone, these salooner tables are indicating fair game fish activity for both days this weekend. Peak daytime hours begin at 10.55 on Saturday and 11.30 on Sunday. The best nighttime fishing will take place after 11.20 on Saturday and 11.55 Sunday night. The sun will rise at 7.31 and set at 7.42, and evenings will have a moon that is only 8% visible. Stick around, we've got fishing reports from across the area on the way. Plus, I'll return with crappie expert Wally Marshall to answer this week's Ask the Pro question. Stay with us. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Mercury. Go boldly. Lorenz, America's number one fish finder. Lose, feel the difference. And by Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, Alabama. Get our free fishing guide at orangebeach.com. Oh my gosh, look at this bass. Boom. Got her. Oh, baby. Look at that big one. Oh, oh my gosh. There's one swimming at the boat. Not bad. He's got one with him. Two fish. Two fish. Look at him. You think he'll eat that other? Th throw your bait in there and see if he'll eat it. Unbelievable. Two fish side by side. The fat fish right there. Nice fish. Yep. Got him. One hook in the mouth That's and one good. hook in the side. There we go. Well, we are out here now. We've made it out onto Choke Canyon. And we're going to try to catch us a few of those clear, beautiful water in there, lots of hydrilla, and away that fish goes. Mike Bates has joined us in the boat. He uh, fishes tournaments all over the place and guides right here at Choke Canyon. And we're just in a giant hydrilla flat right now. Why don't you describe the area we're starting today? Basically, we're, it's, it's called Wesatch Island. And what it is, is it's just tremendous amounts of flats. I mean, it's acres and acres of hydrilla flat, not really deep. But what the fish do is they come in here and spawn 
and then basically they'll stay in here for a period of time until it gets too warm and they'll start moving back out into their summer areas. Which is where they're going next. Uh, yeah. We're on the tail end of the spawn, even though it's, it's still spring. Uh, they've had an extraordinarily warm winter down here, and those fish, a lot of them spawned in, what, December and January. Right. So they're mostly done and kind of headed back toward their summer pattern. Well, we had, right after Halloween, we had a tremendous amount of cold weather. The air temperatures was in the 20s, and for South Texas, that's really cold. And so what they did was, the fish were already shallow anyway, then all of a sudden we had this warming trend, it, and the first thing in their mind was, hey, let's start spawning. So we, we started spawning in December, and now we're seeing, already seeing fry. So it's amazing, you know, sometimes it's just mother nature working that way and, Absolutely. and, that's, how, and that's what happens. Well, we're going to show you a lot of cool stuff today and tell you a, a neat story about what happened to the water level in this lake. But right now, as you can see, we're just in a big old shallow hydrilla flat, just giant hydrilla beds everywhere. Every place you cast looks like a fish. So let's see if there's another one. Catch another one, buddy. <laughs> You gotta pick your fishing days and really watch the weather, but the spring fishing is improving all along the southeast coast. I have all the fishing news about that, but first, this from our good friends at Miralure. Mirror Lure, building quality saltwater lures since 1937, including the new line of Miradine plugs. Turn on the bite anytime, tie on a Mirror Lure. Captain Robert Brody in uh, Biloxi, Mississippi says, while the fishing isn't red hot yet along his part of the coast, it's getting better every, every day or two because the water temperatures are improving. Uh, lately, uh, Captain Brody has been catching good numbers of slot-sized redfish uh, using live bull minnows around docks and bridge abutments. In Alabama, Captain Charlie Gray in Dolphin Island says uh, there's been good trout and red fishing for him in the lower rivers of uh, Feeding Mobile Bay. The key is looking for salty, clear water. Uh, he likes soft plastic uh, uh, baits imitating live shrimp and those natural shrimp colors. He fishes them under popping corks early in the morning. Captain Tim Cutting in southeast Georgia near St. Simons Island says lots of rain has darkened the water there from all the rivers feeding into the oceans and sounds, but he says if you hunt for clear water or fish for redfish uh, and methodically up in the, in the creeks around shell bars and other types of uh, creek structures, you can do real well on slot redfish. Well that's it for the southeast coast. Get on the water and please take a youngster with you when you go. There's one. That is a big one. That is a choke canyon begging. Help me lip it, will you? Yes, sir. Ah, oh, gosh, come on. Stay on there, baby, stay on there. Holy smokes, what a big bass. Oh, my gosh, look at this bass. I actually, I actually want her to kind of get in that grass. No, don't lose her, don't lose her. No, she's all right. There she comes up. Just drag her over. Boom! Got her. Oh, baby! Look at that begging. Oh! Woo. Oh my gosh, we've got the biggest thing in Choke Canyon. Oh man, look at the size of that, Mike that's Bates. A, that's a winner, man. Mike, Mike Bates Woo. Guide Service will put you on the biggest bass in Choke Canyon Lake right there, folks. Oh, what a specimen. Where'll she go, Mike? That's every bit of 10, man. Yeah. That least, is a big giant bass. At least bass. a 10 pounder. At least 10 pounds, maybe more. That one hit a little Jean LaRue rattling crawler. How about that? That's great, man. That is a Choke Canyon special. They're only like three ounces off and of normal tournament scales. So it's, it's actually three ounces light. So let's go ahead and weigh These her. weigh three ounces light? Yes, sir. Well, you're in the tournaments all the time. So we're gonna add three ounces to whatever yep. it is, I guess. All right, there we go. You got it clipped on. 10. 10-3, We got a 10 pounder. That's a good one, man. <laughs> that is a Choke Canyon giant. Choke Canyon's hot, buddy. You bet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we got one big girl. I'm gonna have to, uh, when I catch a big one, I always do one thing, and that's I dig around and I take a heart pill. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's your little Choke Canyon fatty right there with some high drill on him. Nice there's one, there's one. That's a good one. Oh, he's in the grass, which is actually a good thing. Come out of there. A little bit better fish. There. 
hit my wake bait. Come up here, buddy. Man, he was, I had made a huge, long cast way out there. And that fish just came up on top and, and just sucked that wake bait down. He's gonna be tired when he gets up here. There we go. There's your little choke canyon fatty right there with some hydrill on it. Welcome back everybody. We're fishing Choke Canyon down in South Texas today. And uh, I'm actually catching these fish on a new bait. That's that Strike King KVD wake bait. I'll show it to you again later. Fishing with Mike Bates today on what has turned out to be a lovely fishing day. I mean, there's a front coming in later on this evening and the wind's supposed to blow 30 miles an hour up to 40 tomorrow, but today it's just gorgeous. Watch, look at this clear water right here. When I release this fish, I wanna show you this, look at this. Just to give people a projection of what's gonna happen next, as we get into these hotter summertime months, and it does get hot down here in South Texas, they're gonna to tend to move out, out of this stuff and back to the outside edges of the hydrilla beds. Right. Deeper water. Because what I happen in here is it, it, she's gonna to completely top out. So when the grass tops out, so you wouldn't be able to fish in here back in here anyway, but a lot of the fish like to move to the outside edges. And then what you'll end up being doing is Texas rigging the worms, or you'll actually be punching uh, heavy weights through the grass. Wow. Well, come on out here. It's gonna be good right through the summertime. So we'll give you Mike's contact information and some good contact information of where to stay up at Chilt Canyon Lodge in just a couple of minutes as well. Hey folks, it's time for your Carolina's Report this week brought to you by Crazy Sister Marina, the leader in water sports along the green strands. Hey, we want you to live like a local when you're in town. Come by and book your trip with us. Eco tours, fishing trips, private boats, it doesn't matter. We've got it all right here. Visit crazysystermarina.com and book your trip here along the Grand Strand when you're in our area. Let's talk about freshwater fishing and we're gonna talk bass this week in particular. Let's go down to the Cooper River, an incredible fishery. You remember a couple years ago, the Elite Series, all the pros took off when 100 plus miles to get there each way to fish those fish. And I'll tell you some good places down there right now. Rice Hope, the creeks in Rice Hope are incredible right now. And Farm Creek, the mouth of Farms Creek is incredible as well. The waters, are, the rivers are clearing up, just like here in the waterway here at the Intercoastal Waterway outside of Georgetown. And I'll tell you some great places here. You wanna get out and find them. The Carr Creek area and the Jericho Creek area. Those fish are bedding back in those rice fields. You can find them at Ditch Mouse. Get out there and concentrate. These warm nights are just putting them in that mood. This is your Carolina's Report brought to you by Crazy Sister Marina. Remember, fish smarter, not harder, and keep your chaos organized. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Motor Guides Tour Pro, Cable Steer Motor with GPS Anchor, Waypoint Marine, the Gulf Coast's leading saltwater boating specialist, Strike King, Taiwan On, and by Low Boats. Welcome to Low Country. How about that? Way to go, Mike. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Boom. Ah, boom. Yeah. There's a That's good a chunk nice canyon one. for you. Hey, you got fish. Decent fish. Yeah, that's a good one. Come in here and grab him for you. Straight down. Under the boat. And back out. Man, he is, he is a mad dude. There we go. How about that? Way to go, Mike. Thank you. Boom. <laughs> ah, boom. Yeah. There's a That's good a chunk nice canyon one. for you. All Look right. how thick that fish is. Just yep. as healthy as can be. Yep. But we'll turn him loose. Good. And uh, I want to ask you something about this lake level. You know, I mentioned at the beginning that uh, Mike was going to join us and that there was a story about Choke Canyon. Everybody loves a good fishing story, and this is a great one. Tell us about the history over the last 10 years of this lake. This lake was super low for a long time. What, what happened here? Well, last 10 years we had we had no water, no floods in, on the Frio. And so what's happening for 10 years, it's been between 20 and 29 feet low. So wow. what happens is there's no shoreline structure for them. So they go out and suspend. And it's really hard to catch suspending fish. 
And now, you know, we had that nice rain in October of 2018, 30 inches of rain up there in Lake Union Valley area, had a 10 foot rise, a six foot rise, and we got water coming into the lake, but it rose up gradually, so it kept the grass. That was the key. If it would have rose up too much, we'd killed all the grass, and then we would still been in the same issue that they would have had no shoreline cover. So hydrilla is always your friend. Well, I want to show you what some of this hydrilla looks like. It is beautiful. Every cast looks like you ought to catch a fish. It's just big old mushroom pods of this hydrilla growing up everywhere, scattered in between this Weesatch and uh, salt cedar brush. And there are pockets and holes in it. It's a lot like saltwater fishing. You're fishing these open pockets and open holes in this stuff. But a 16 foot rise in less than a month. That's just incredible on, on this lake after going 10 years without any water. So that's the success story of mm -hmm. Chelk Canyon and, and the, the fishing is just proving it right now. Hey guys, welcome to this week's report for Tennessee, Mississippi and Alabama. Uh, this week's report is brought to you by the fine folks over at TH Marine. If you boat, you fish, uh, you spend any time around a boat for any purpose, go over to thmarine.com and check out their incredible line of products designed to make boating, fishing much better for you. You'll thank me later. Check them out at thmarine.com. Uh, over in Mississippi, uh, Ross Barnett is gonna be the deal right now for, for bass fishing. Uh, they're getting around the bank. They're starting to really, really eat there. Uh, you can catch them on uh, square bill crankbaits like a KVD 1.5, 2.5. In Alabama, one of the really, really fun places to go this time of year is Lay Lake. It's full of big, giant spotted bass. Uh, they, they eat a spinner bait really, really good. They'll eat a swim bait really good. In Tennessee, I, I'll be honest with you, right now, Center Hill or Dale Hollow are probably my favorite. They're deep, they're clear, big smallmouth, a lot going on. But here's the deal, get out there, fish for them, have fun. This is the time of year the memories are made. We'd love to see you here, God bless. You got one? Yeah, got one here. It's a good fish there. There you go. And a little swim bait. Yep. Oh yeah. Nice chunky choke cannon bass right there. Fat one. Okay, well we're still out fishing this big flat and you know you can actually see there there goes the fish back. And so when you're out here fishing this kind of stuff, hydrilla beds and this scattered brush and little thin stuff sticking out of the water, you're just covering water, right? You're, you're right. not, there's not a pattern where you're actually targeting those fish. And not a specific, like I said, each, each spot is a great cast. There's not a bad cast on the lake. So you just have to cover some water. And, and then all of a sudden you'll see them in a few areas, they'll start stacking up. You'll catch one here and there'll be another one here, another one here, because pure Floridas tend to, to wolf pack occasionally, especially if they're in post-spawn patterns. Well, my guide's here um, a lot of days and he's had some 80 and 90 bass days this spring. Uh, the fish are, are in here plentiful, thousands, thousands of them. We've seen old beds where the fish have spawned this spring and left a bed just by the hundreds around us. So the population of the bass here is just about as good as you could ever hope for it. There's a giant explosion of two to four pound fish. So like I said, we've got several year classes stacked back to back. So we're just, all we just need is continue to get some more water and just let them grow. You bet. All right, good job, buddy. Watch our latest episode or catch up on past episodes on our website at letsfishtv.com. Be sure to hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter for new fishing videos every day. And download the free Waypoint TV app to get all the latest episodes every week on your phone, tablet, computer, or smart TV. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Bobby Garland Crappie Baits and the original Baby Shad and new slab Huntar Minnow. Place your glove. Stay outdoors longer with our gloves, hats, and shades. Balls out. Made in the USA. Heavy duty mounts for your fish finders. And by Camus Boats. Tomorrow's tournament boat today. Welcome back, everyone. Let's get right to your Ask the Pro question for this week. Terry wants to know, what is the biggest crappie you have ever caught? For an answer, we asked the one and only Mr. Crappie, Wally Marshall. 
Well, I'll tell you what, it was three and a quarter pounds. I was fishing with Jimmy Houston. We was doing a show up in Oklahoma and we were using spinning tackle. And this is one of my speed shooter rods that I have on the market today with Lou's. I was using a six and a half foot rod, six pound test, 16th ounce lure. And I caught the biggest crappie of my life on blue and white, my favorite color. Thank you, Wally. If you want some help from one of the pros, simply go to letsfishtv.com and follow the Ask the Pro link to submit a question. Now it's time to find out who wins this week's Big Catch of the Week. We've made it safely back to the boat ramp at the Callaham State Park at Choke Canyon Reservoir in our low stinger 198, and it's time right now for this week's winner in the Big Catch of the Week contest. He's Scotty Atkins of McDonough, Georgia, showing a 50-pound flathead catfish he caught at Jackson Lake, Georgia. If you'd like to be our next winner and have you and your big fish shown on television, go to our new website at letsfishtv.com, follow the instructions on the front page to enter the contest. Here's some of the gear that we used to catch these bass, including that giant one that you saw this week on the show. It begins with the Loose Custom Speed Stick Rod. It's a seven foot, six inch, medium heavy action rod. It's got the new G-Clutch handle that puts you directly in touch with the rod blank so you can feel every strike, and that was critical to detecting these light strikes today on these wake baits and the plastic baits we were throwing. We had it rigged out with the Loose Tournament MP Bait Cast Reel. It's one of the newest in the Loose line. It's a beautiful, smooth reel, fits perfectly in the palm of your hand. I love this reel, my first time to fish with it. As far as the baits were concerned, we used two of them to catch these fish. It begins on the top with the Jean LaRue rattling crawler. Now the cool thing about this bait is it's got some kicking legs that swim through that grass. It's got a hollow body. If you want to rig it weightless, you can. It'll float right over the top of the grass or you can put a couple of glass beads or a small tiny weight up inside that hollow body. Then this was my first time to fish with the new Strike King KVD 2.5 wake bait. It's got a very flat bill on it that lets it stay right on top of the water. You can either hold your rod tip high and keep it right on top or drive it just under the surface by pulling your rod tip down low. Recently I was flying home on an airline and I had the proverbial screaming kid just a couple of rows in front of me. The poor kid's ears were hurting. He screamed the entire flight home no matter what the parents did. After we landed, I was bracing myself for what I figured was the oncoming barrage of ugly and sarcastic comments coming from those passengers toward those parents as they exited the plane. But what I heard was something very surprising. Those parents were being comforted and consoled and hugged by other passengers who said, you know, we were once parents of screaming kids as well. It's okay. And in that moment, I was encouraged to know that yes, Compassion can triumph over criticism, and good can still triumph over evil in this world. What a trip we enjoyed today with Mike Bates here at Choke Canyon Reservoir between San Antonio and Corpus Christi in South Texas. We caught a bunch, and we'll give you one more quick look at that monster 10-pound, three-ounce bass that we wrestled into the boat, one of the biggest bass I've ever caught in my life. If you'd like to come and book a fishing trip here to Choke Canyon, you can do that by contacting Mike Bates at the information you see on your screen. And if you want a great place to stay when you come here, we can highly recommend Choke Canyon Lodge. It's a very short distance just across the street from the lake. It's got very comfortable rooms, beautiful setting, a great place for you to back your boat into a stall and charge it overnight. Wonderful people running it, everything you could possibly want at Choke Canyon Lodge, my wife and I very much enjoyed our stay there. From beautiful Choke Canyon Reservoir, South Texas, until next week, I'm Barry Stokes saying, let's fish, be safe, have fun. Bye bye y'all. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to see more fishing tips, how-to videos, big fish catches, and full episodes of our Let's Fish TV show, be sure to subscribe right here to our YouTube channel. You can also like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. Good fishing out there.